So this is my Shaolin high speed head. Uh, maybe I will paint it, but otherwise it's uh, functioning well now. Uh, I've uh, not trimmed it, but I've set it to 90 degrees. You can tilt it this way also if you want to. It has a down feed here, the quill. I think it is some 80 or 90 millimeters. Uh, the original head came with, um, or comes with a one poke lever. Maybe I will mount this instead, but somehow I just used what I had. It also has a sort of a. And uh, here. here you see the. The hand wheel I just put on, which may or may or may or not be may or may not survive. For the um, hand wheel, I think it functions okay like this. Also, as you can see, I mounted the collet here with the uh, with a fifteen mil um, ripping end mill. It's a uh, E25 uh, holder, not an ER, so it doesn't. Uh, uh, well, maybe I will have trouble with ejecting the the collets. We'll see. Then I will have to make myself another knot here. Uh -huh. Of course, it happened what I s anticipated, namely that the collet is stuck in the holder together with the end mill. Uh, this is because. In comparison with, it's not, not as easy to see, but this is the original E type knot, and this is the ER type knot. This is a new one, and this has a, a recess also, so that when you unscrew the knot, it pulls out the collet, while this E type has not. So either I make myself a new knot, or I make some sort of extraction tool that I, for instance, a clamp, like a, a two jaws that clamps with a circular, into the circular groove here. Maybe a pivot point on the other side, and then just, uh, it sh should be possible to do it that way. I made an extraction tool for the ER holder, if it's stuck up here, I can pop it out like that, or like it. But I thought that was the closest I got to uh, some smartness instead of banging on the collet itself with uh, with a rubber mallet. So very simple. Anyway, this um, down feed is also connected so that I have a possibility to set the a dead stop speak like this where it when it reaches zero here and the quill down feed also has a function for auto disengagement like this so if I set the, this and then calibrate say I want from where I am now Two centimeters or twenty millimeters. I move down. And it disengages. The head quadruples the speed. So if I set this now for direct coupling, I have speeds up to Uh, 1600 so that means that the head will then be uh, over 6000 rpm at maximum we can try to run it up it will be noisy of course but let's see so i switch it on just uh, just um, the spindle motor and um, it yeah the, the motor uh, can be run in two directions and you need that because now the, 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 the rotation is changed the other way. So 
now at 360 times 4, so roughly 1300 RPM. If I go up to the second speed. Here is 2000 and the highest there was over 6,000. Here we have the knob to drive dog or drive. You see the mounting in the middle there. This is different from the 53 head, which uses a gear instead. So the 51 and 52 share this. I will try it now at uh, what is with back gear. A slower speed. This is uh, then um, four hundred RPM. Let's just try that. You are at the specified the. Uh, Revolutions per minute for the cutter, I think. This, this is just a piece of steel. No idea what. Set it to the slowest speed. And the hand wheel also for the slowest, almost speed. And I forgot to lock down, but that's best to do, of course, on the depth. Uh, and this was the piece I used and uh, when you have this kind of metal removal rate in less than two minutes or in roughly two minutes uh, I can't fault that really so maybe I can also use all these cheap vernier scales here to set uh, the down feed here or the this axis also because my old style Heidenhain uh, you can of course connect it to this instead of the set feed but I have it to the set feed I'm satisfied with that I only use it as a positioning device and you have um, The two speeds with back gear and without back gear, one and two corresponding to the motor settings. In this case I used it in, in reverse. Speed one. And two. And this is the feed and this is the pump if you want to use coolant. And that's um, something I haven't used, but it's down here. In here, there's a coolant pump. So I chucked up a test piece again to see what abilities I get with this 15 mil roughing end mill. Um, yeah, I'll um, in feed about half the width of the 
of the test piece here and I'll try the full length of the cutter try the same speed um, as I did on the uh, other piece where I plowed in uh, it's 400 rpm that means it's 100 rpm on the on the motor uh, speed one in back gearing and then it's times four on the head here Probably could have done a lot more than that also, uh, but I'm satisfied. We'll do it once more for the camera and we'll run it a little bit faster. That's 500. RPM So it survived, two passes, I'm fairly pleased, that's about 15 millimeters deep and about 30 millimeters height.